Hi, good afternoon, people of YouTube. Um, new project, not a new project. We're doing some work on this. Um, this is a car that I've purchased many months ago and was going to turn it into a, another race car. Um, but that didn't go to that far. Um, I started getting bits and pieces for it and building stuff up, ready to do the whole swap. Um, but I've decided against it and we're not building this as a race car anymore. Um, so I've got a track day coming up um, next weekend. So we're going to be putting some of the race bits on, um, not all of them, and preparing this for a track day to see how it do and how it fares up. Um, so, yeah, um, the bits that we're going to do is I've got some lowering springs, um, some motor build lowering springs, and some brakes, whole brake kit, so calipers, braided lines, pads, and all that sort of jazz. Um, I've got a leaky thermostat, so we need to replace that as well. Um, and that is it. That's all we're going to do for this. So um, we'll just get on and start doing some bits. Now, I'm not going to do any recording of the low and springs because um, I've already done a video for that um, on a previous project. Um, but I'll probably take you through the brakes. The rears are just a standard ZS180 setup, um, but the fronts, we've gone for a core Type R brakes. So there's a bit of a fettling um, that needs to be done for them, um, i.e. the discs, um, to get them to fit. Um, I'll take you through the thermostat stuff. Um, at the minute, I'm just bonding on this trim here. That has fell off and someone's bonded on already with some tiger seal um, and I think that failed and then they gorilla glued it so yeah I'm gonna have to stick that on so I'll just do that with a bit more tiger seal um, but yeah let's get into it and um, I'll start I'll show you some parts um, I guess and go from there. All right, so this is what we got. This is what I started to put together. Um, so had subframe all shot blasted and powder coated, brand new 180 steering rack. All the arms have been redone. Um, yeah, with Black Series Powerflex bushes. Um, got the hard race. Spherical compliance bush at the back there. Um, but yeah, I think I'm just gonna sell all that and um, just take the brakes off them to be honest with you. So these are the Honda Accord Toy Bar two pot calipers for the front, and then we've got a modified disc to go with them. Um, and then these are just standard 180 rear calipers. That's just been redone um, by Big Red. Hell brake lines all round. I've got the other two here for the rear. EBC blue stuff pads. Um, again, discs for the rear as well. C hooked, same as the front. And some Miller's brake fluid. So that is the the brake setup, shall we say. Um, yeah, and then I've got some motor build springs where they just look like standard black springs. You can't really tell anything, anything about them, um, apart from they're a little bit, a little bit lower. Um, so we'll we'll crack on. We'll get them done, get the brakes on, and then we'll do a an alignment on it. Um, take it down the road, settle everything, and then we'll do a string alignment on it just to get everything in the check. Of um, Stuck that side spout on, 
as you can see I've made a bit of a mess of it um, I tried to clamp it in place with some G clamps um, but that just kept sliding off because it's um, a lot of taper it's like a wedge shape so it kept trying to ping off so I had to tape it in place at, at the minute um, but all the glue is just squidged out so I've got a bit of cleaning up to do um, on the glue side of things, I don't know if I can zoom in anymore you can just see some of the glue just squeegeing out on the door but that's that um, yeah so we'll get we'll get started get some stuff stripped out get the old brakes off get um, shocks out so we can start swapping some springs over and yeah, I don't think I'll show you much because I've already done videos of um, brake replacement and spring replacement on the ZS on the ZS. So you'll have to go back through the playlists and have a look at that. It's a blue ZS I did it on. Um, so yeah, I've got the firmness that I do. So I'll do a little video of that. It might be a separate video. Not sure yet. Um, but yeah, we'll get some bits off and start swapping some bits over. And when I fit these brakes, I'll give you a, a rundown of the, the specs and the front brakes at least. Um, so anyone that wants to put on the brakes on their car, they can. All right, let's get on. So I thought I'd give you a little bit of a recap. You've got one bolt at the bottom here. Just in there, in that bush. That's the bottom of the shock. I undo these two bolts here. Um, and then you've got two 15mm nuts at the top, just in there, undo all them and then I get a lever bar in between that chassis leg and on top of that arm there and that gives you just enough room to um, wiggle the shock out. But I've got it out, got it apart, just cleaned it up a bit, it's not looking too great to be honest with you. I was a bit old and tired. The top mounts look a bit old and tired. Spring just looks in terrible condition. See all the powder coating starting to, to come off. But these are the shiny new ones for motor build. So you get a set of four and they they mark them at the top here somewhere. So motor build ZS 180 front short. So we need a rear one somewhere. Da -da -da -da. So all in your finest newspaper of course. I think this is a rear. Because the top has got this tight coil on the top, and then the rears have got that type of coil on the top. But I will just double check, um, and then I'm just going to slap it on that shot, get it all together, and chuck it back on the car. And we'll move on to the next one. Right, here we go, folks. The rear is done, so we've got a new motor build springs in. I haven't um, torqued any of these bolts. I've just literally just gunned them up, but I think they should be around about 45 newton meters for that bottom bolt there. And these two top bolts here. Um, yeah, and the same with the, the nuts on the inside as well. I think they're 45 newton meters. I take that as gospel, but again, that's all done. Nice new spring. So we'll um, get on and make a start on the fronts now. And normally I take the fork off the bottom. Let me get a light. Normally I take the fork off the bottom. Um, but I think I'm going to do what the Honda boys do and split out that pinch bolt there. But it's looking a bit worse for wear. But we'll see how we get on. 
Um, but yeah, it's a couple of little 10 mil headed bolts there that we need to undo. I'll probably undo that castle nut there, just to give me a little bit of flex on the on the hub to get everything out. But yeah, we'll um we'll make a start. All right, that went surprisingly well. Um, the only thing I did have to do was um, had to use some spring clamps just to compress the spring enough to get the top mount on. Um, but apart from that, this all came apart a lot easier than what I thought that was going to, um, considering the state of it. So we're now going to crack on and do the other side. You can see the, the state of that fork into the into the shock assembly. Not very nice, but yeah. Undone that pinch bolt, that's a 14 mil. Undone this pinch bolt, that's a 17 mil um, nut and a 17 mil um, bolt. And then done the two 15 mil top mount um, bits. And um, yeah, you literally, once you've got the fork off, so undo that bolt, undo that bolt, and then you can literally just tap the top of this fork with a hammer and I was literally tapping it, it won't go in health level or anything like that. Um, yeah, and that just fell off and then that sits on top of the dry shaft. And then once you've undone these two 15 mil top nuts, um, you can just wiggle it out. You sort of like have to bring it down through and then back out the top um, around the, the brake hoses. That's another thing you need to do, and two 10 mil nuts for the brake hoses. Um, I would clean them up because the, the bracket that it sits on, um, that's a bit flimsy. So yeah, clean them up rather well, and then just crack them off with a bar first um, before you go for the gun. Um, but yeah, didn't have to undo that ball joint at all. So maybe that's the, the way forward. Um, looking into the future so yeah I'm just gonna crack on and do this side um, I would love to set you up and show you how I do it um, but um, I'm recording on my phone today because um, the GoPro batteries are all flat um, and I haven't really got anywhere to sit you where you're gonna have a good view you know what I mean because I haven't got a phone holder for this apart from what's on my mega long tripod and I can't really get the tripod up in to the wheel arch area at the minute um, so we'll crack on do this and then um, we'll move on to some brakes all right I saw that back together so the springs all in now, I've been having problems with the seating of these top mounts, the rubber bits. And you see a little bit on the skew if there. So I'm hoping that once you go down the road that I'll just slip into place. But yeah, um, the tops of these springs seem to be slightly bigger than the tops of the standard spring. Um, so we'll just have to see how that goes. I haven't bothered. Um, refitting the the brake line assembly to the shock because we're obviously going to be changing that out for some hell braided lines so yeah that's the next job on the task is to get all these brakes changed over now again I'm not going to film too much of it because I've already done this in a previous um, video um, so I think I'm just going to crack on get these backs done um, because of um, yeah I've already done a separate video to changing the rear brakes and the front brakes on the standard ZS180. Um, so I'll just knock all these out. And then when it comes to the front, I'll get all these fronts off. And then um, we can then look at the the new brake setup that we're planning on running. So I think the only difficult bit that I'm gonna face is getting these brake unions off on these flexies because they're always seized solid. Um, I haven't come across one yet that hasn't, that just don't undo apart from that 
ones that have been replaced with copper lines but even then you end up twisting the copper line um, so yeah so that is going to be the only hold up I think but let's have a look at time wise I know I'm in a workshop I don't think but yeah I spent uh, about an hour and a half getting it on the ramp um, getting the wheels off and doing one side uh, ten two hours so yeah I've been on this for three and a half hours to get it on the ramp um, get the wheels off and to um, replace all the rear springs and all the front springs so I was quite fortunate that everything came out okay without um, anything rounding off so right let's crack on and get all these brakes apart um, and see if these lines undo or not but um, I might cut in in between doing all this um, but yeah we'll see in the next clip shall we all right that's one side done so we've got fully refurbished calipers from Big Red and the only reason why I got Big Red to do them is the ones that I bought the core type R ones were already done from Big Red. I bought them like that as second-hand units. Um, so I thought I'd send these ones away to Big Red and that would be exactly the same colour then. Um, so they match. Well, that's my thinking behind it anyway. But yeah, so we've got the old M-Tech C-Hook discs, the EBC Blue Stuff pads, fully rebuilt calipers with all new clips. Um, the the clips in here, normally you get them and you get like the single ones um, for the Honda Civics. They are not the right ones. The right ones are these double ones. And you can never find them anywhere. But I figured out they're exactly the same as the CRV, Mark 1 CRVs. So if you're ever in the lookout for these, then Mark 1 CRVs. Um, hell braided line all in. Uh, I've replaced the bolts that hold it in the place with stainless ones because the old ones, you can see, they're a little bit chewed up. Um, so we replaced them. Um, so what problems did we come across? Absolutely none. I was really surprised that a brake union come straight off. I cleaned it off yesterday with a wide brush, blew it out of an airline and soaked it in WD-40. And the thing just came, just cracked off straight away. No issues whatsoever. So I'm expecting the other three to be absolute bastards now. Um, but we'll soon see. Anyway, this side is done. I'm going to crack on and do the other side and yeah I'll come back to you when we've done all that. Righto, that's this side all done. Um, same sort of deal really, everything came out alright. Um, apart from one of the bolts that holds the brake line in place at the side around off so I had to use a little Irwin extractor to get that off and also the handbrake cable where it goes into the bracket had seized in so I had to I'll take it over to the bench had to cut it and split it to get the handbrake cable out but because we're not using them and it doesn't really matter but yeah that's all done and I did make a start on the front so this is the front where the Honda Accord Type R calipers, um, all the braided hoses all in there. Look, again, the the brake lines just came out, no problem at all. So I'm really lucky at the minute, um, but I have got another side to do. So, you know, <laughs> it's not going to be. Hopefully, that's not going to cause an issue. Um, but yeah, that's all on there. Again, twin pot. Blue stuff pads, M Tech discs, 
Um, so I'll take you over to the bench and just run through the specs of what you need to do to get these to fit. Because of the discs that we use, you can't put the retaining screws in anymore. Um, but the wheel holds the disc in anyway. Um, the caliper bolts straight on, no problems whatsoever, use the original bolts. Um, and the wheel fits over them as well, loads of clearance. So standard wheels will fit on it, no problem at all. So we'll go over to the bench and I'll just run through um, what, it all, what it all is. So these are the calipers that I got. Um, second hand, um, apparently, but was previously built um, by Big Red. And I think the guy had him on his car for a month and then took him off because he went for big four pots. And so he took him off, cleaned him up, and you see there's a little bit of damage on there. But it's what it is. I'm not fussed by it. Um, and the car is all bought onto the original hub on the original hub with the original bolts. So that's not an issue again. Um, these are ZS 180 brake lines. So again, just bolt straight on. Honda Accord Type Bar Blue Stuff Pads. Um, yeah, nothing really to say about them. Um, and these are the discs. Now these discs come off a Renault Scenic DCI 04209. Um, you have to do a little bit of machining to get them to fit, but they've gone from a 282mm to a 300mm. Um, so these are now 300mm with the twin pots and you have to open up the bore of the hub here um, from 61 to 64 mil and also there's a lip inside here um, almost like a chamfer or an edge or ledge I should say that you have to machine flat and all you do is machine it flat to this bit here and machine it flat to the to the edge here um, and that's all you have to do. So Renault Scenic, DCI, 1.5 DCI, 300mm discs um, from an 04 to an 09. Sorry, Grand Scenic discs. Not Scenic, because I think the, the Scenics are slightly smaller, but the Grand Scenic 1.5 DCI discs. Um, and yeah, if you've got a lathe or know someone with a lathe, um, then they'll easily turn that down for you. Um, I've took these to the machine shop. They charged me for 30 pounds for a pair of discs to have these machined, um, which I didn't think were too bad. So yeah, um, that is it. I am going to fit these onto the other side front. Again, nothing really too complicated. Um, just take them off and bolt them on how you would any other disc um, and caliper setup. As I say, I've um, cleaned out a wire wheel or wire brush and plenty of penetrate oil um, overnight. So hopefully that will come off. It don't look like it's been off before. So it's got nice flat edges on it instead of being rounded off. So yeah, hopefully that will go as planned. And then I'll come to come back to you when these are all done. Um, I have got to bleed the brakes. I've got some Miller's 300 plus brake fluid. So I'm going to have to drain the brake fluid. Um, I've got a vacuum um, bleeder and that we can just draw the fluid through. Um, and then I haven't got a, an adapter to fit onto the master cylinder on one of these so I'm gonna to have to wait for someone else to come along um, but yeah I'm just gonna get on fit these and then I'll come back to you when it's all done all right there we go that is all on and together again no issues whatsoever with that brake line fitting which is awesome um, Placed all the bolts down here with stainless ones. Just because the old ones just looked a little bit 
on the ropey side. So just put some stainless ones in, chucked a little bit of grease on the threads and shouldn't have no more problems with that in the future. And so it's a little bit of damage there. So yeah, that's it for this one. Um, we managed to fit all new lowering springs and also a Honda Accord Type R caliper set with some Renault discs and obviously the the rear standard 180s with some blue stuff pads and some C-hook discs. Um, but yeah, everything is together. The only thing I've got to do is bleed it, but I need a second person for that. Um, so I'll do that another day, probably tomorrow. Um, I'm gonna end this video here and um, get on and do the thermostat, which I'll get on and do the thermostat, which I'll explain in a bit more detail um, in that video than in this video, uh, purely because obviously I've done brakes before. Um, the only thing that's a little bit dis different is obviously the setup on the front, um, but as I say, they all bolt up the same. Um, and obviously I've fitted low and springs to one of these before as well. So yeah, check them other videos. I'll probably leave a link in the description for them. Um, but yeah, I'm going to leave it here. I'll bleed the brakes up in the next video. Next video, going to do the thermostat. We're going to do an oil and filter change because I don't know what oil is in it. Um, that was done prior to me buying the car. Um, I've got the paperwork for that. Um, but I don't know what oil it's got in there. So we're going to use some Miller's, um, they call it the Miller's E Performance. I've been using that a lot recently. So yeah, I'm going to be using that because that's designed for, or well, they say that's designed for, for track use as well. So, and this being that it's only going to be doing some track days, I'll use that instead of putting the properly expensive Miller's race stuff in. But yeah, I'll leave it there. You can see the mess of hair that I've made fitting this spat, look. I'm gonna have to get something to clean all this up here, look. It's all the tiger seal. That's why I got the gray tiger seal um, in the end, and not the black stuff, because I wanted to do this. Um, but we're gonna have to clean that up anyway. That's for another day. At least it's not gonna fall off around the track now, where I think it would have done if we'd have left it alone. Um, but yeah, anyway, rambling on. We will catch you in the next video, which is going to be um, thermostat, oil service, and a fuel filter, and the bleed brakes. So stay tuned for that one. That's going to come up quite soon after this one. Um, so yeah, we'll catch you then.